Hello, this video is about how to save electricity at home. I feel I'm qualified in saying something about that since we've been living fairly simply and not using that much electricity for the last 11 years. The first year we were in our camper van and then the next 10 years we were living in our house with solar power. For this video I'm just going to talk about energy uses in a more typical UK house which of course before we came here we lived in the UK in a normal house connected to the grid. We had uh, two children living with us most of the time, sometimes four children and so we know what it's like or I know what it's like and so I'm going to talk more about the energy usage in a typical house in the UK with the sort of appliances that you would have there. If you're looking at how to save electricity in your home first thing to do is look at the big things, look at the overall things that you're doing. So the number one thing you can do, which is really helpful, is to switch off the standby button. So switch off all those appliances that don't need to be on. At the end of the day, put them off. You can save about £65 a year by doing that. So if you see that red light, it's using electricity somewhere. And that's just a waste, isn't it? It's electricity. It's £65. Think what you could do with that. So that's the first thing. Do obvious things like if you've got, this is more to do with heating, but you might be heating with electricity, some people are. So yeah, block up any drafts and things like, you know, under the bottoms of doors, round windows, do the obvious things. It's a bit like your leaky bucket, fill the holes first and deal with that and then look at the other things. So the next thing to do really is to look at your big appliances. What are the things that are using the most electricity? Now in most houses, if you have, um, if you had something like air conditioning, which I think a lot of UK houses don't have, but if you did, that would be quite a high use of electricity. But putting that on one side, the next biggest thing is a tumble dryer. So if you have a tumble dryer, that uses a lot of electricity. Followed by things like an electric hob, an electric oven, a uh, fridge freezer, especially if it's an older fridge freezer and it's not that energy efficient, uh, a dishwasher. They're your biggest, th biggest uses of energy. So look at each one of them and think, is there a different way of using it? Some of them have um, energy efficiency programs and things like that. So instance, for instance, when you're doing your washing, you don't need to use a hot setting to wash your clothes most of the time. I have to say here in France, we've got a little twin tub washing machine and I just do a cold, I wash in completely cold water with a, I use a product that's suitable for washing in cool temperatures. And now the EU, I think, has stipulated that all new washing machines must have a 20 degree wash program on them. So we're coming down anyway. I have to say, I, nobody sort of said that we smell. I've not really noticed anything horrendous about our clothes and we do some pretty, you know, pretty heavy, dirty work at times. So you can do a cool wash and it'll be fine can also wash less frequently and that's it so just take each machine each thing you use and think can I use this in a different way do I need to use it as often things like showers if you've got an electric shower particularly a power shower they use a lot of energy so maybe you just don't need to be in the shower for quite as long just reduce the time you have your shower or less frequently you don't have to have a shower every day for instance you'll be all right um, and so take each thing like that and see what you can do with them. I'll put a few tips here and in the comments below as well. And then after that, it's worth looking at the appliances that actually are quite good on energy use because some things you can maybe replace with that. For instance, a microwave is uh, quite low on energy consumption. So boiling a kettle um, to heat water is more efficient than boiling a pan of water on your hob. So if you were cook, cook some potatoes, say boil some potatoes, it's more efficient to boil your kettle, get the hot water and pour it in and, and cook your potatoes like that than just waiting for the water to come to a boil on the hob. Choose the right size hob as well for the pan, which pan you're using, because that can make a difference. And over time, these little habits actually do save energy and then that saves you money, which is the thing that most people are focused on at the moment is saving money. The other energy efficiency appliances, well, if you've got something like a pressure cooker, that'd be great. Get things out that you maybe haven't used for years. A lot of people have these appliances right at the back of the cupboard. Get it out. Learn how to use a pressure cooker again. It's great for some things like soups and stews and you're going to use 
I think you save about 90% of the energy you would use to cook that same stew, say, on your hob. So that's a big saving. It's lots of little bits, but it adds up over time. TVs, I have to say, are quite energy efficient. Uh, I'm not a fan of TV particularly, so but I thought I'd better mention that, OK? Maybe when we're a bit cold and shivering, it'd be nice to watch TV a bit more, so who knows? Uh, air fryers, if you happen to have an air fryer, apparently they're quite energy efficient. LED lights, they're good. And uh, I think we probably all realise that now. So if you've got LED lights, that's really great. Um, if you can afford to replace some of your existing bulbs, that's great as well. Um, we've got about 45 LED lights in our house and each one is one watt. So altogether 45 watts. So it's, uh, it's a good way of lighting your house. And then other overall tip might be to check some, some energy suppliers have an off-peak time when it's actually cheaper. So maybe during the night, it's often between the hours of something like 11 o'clock at night and 8 in the morning. And if you're able to do things during those times, like maybe put on a load of washing or something, then it might be worth looking at that as well as another way of saving energy. That's a quick few tips on sort of finding out the main appliances that are using the energy. Look at some of the ones that aren't using so much energy. Can you replace them? Can you do less? Can you do things a bit differently? It's about changing habits. Um, if you want to take it a bit further, you could look at more of these videos where we live very simply. We don't use much energy at all, I would say. That's uh, another step. It doesn't suit everybody, but I do think as well, although we're not maybe enjoying this particular time and having to actually think about the amount of energy we use and feeling a bit limited and restricted, the really positive thing is, is that actually it's not a bad thing for the planet. And also at some stage, some future generation is going to have this problem. So really, by taking some responsibility now, I think that's a good thing for us to do. Sometimes it's just small changes. It doesn't have to all be bad. I mean, we're very happy living how we live, and there's a lot of appliances that we don't have. And I actually feel our life is often richer for that. So it doesn't have to be a bad thing. And I suppose all I'm saying is that when things are a bit tough in life, if we can change our perspective on it, at least try and find the positives in it, then uh, that can help to get through it as well so you're doing it with a more positive mindset rather than oh god we have to do this there's it you know it's that sort of lack thing um it's happening anyway so you think well let's try and be a bit positive about it so we are doing some good stuff for the planet when we're using less energy we are saving some money when we're using less energy and uh, we are hopefully help helping future generations who are going to have this issue um, to deal with anyway, probably on a much bigger scale than us. So, if you like these videos, hit the like button. If you think it's of any benefit to anyone that you know, share it. Um, if you've got any comments and ideas, put them in the comments down below because I'm sure I've just mentioned a few things. There's so many ways in which we can save energy and save money. So let's share them with other people. So if you have good ideas, just put it in the comments. Someone might read that and you might help somebody else. OK, there's a couple more videos here as well. And uh, subscribe if uh, you want to receive more videos like this. Lots of love. Have a good week. Bye.